In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Three men were cast into the fiery furnace, and they fell bound into the burning flame, and walked in the midst of the flame, praising God and blessing the Lord. This was the conclusion of the last of the prophecies we heard tonight. The twelfth prophecy taken from the prophet Daniel and sung in that tone of exuberance. This is a prophecy that has been proclaimed this night since the earliest days of the church. And there can be no doubt that it has always been there, especially for those being received into the Catholic Church tonight. Especially, I dare to suggest, for the three men who have been received this very night. For earlier this day, before the prophecy was proclaimed, these three men were preparing to enter the Church of God. And upon those to be baptized, the following of many exorcisms was pronounced. Surely it is no secret to thee, Satan, that punishment is thy lot, torments thy portion, that the day of judgment threatens thee, the day of never-ending torture, the day that shall be like a flaming furnace, in the midst of which Everlasting perdition awaits thee and thy apostate angels. Therefore, accursed one, deservedly doomed, pay homage to the living and true God. Pay homage to Jesus Christ, his Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. These words remind us that the prophecy of Daniel is tonight to be an encouragement to those who by joining the Church of God have truly been cast into a fiery furnace, a furnace burning with charity and joy, but a reminder of the suffering that comes with serving Christ in this world. We can well imagine the first Christians who heard this prophecy as they were being received into the church in the age of martyrs, being threatened by a wicked king that they would be killed unless they worshipped idols, and to whom they responded, We have no need to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known to thee, we will not serve thy gods or worship the golden image which thou hast set up. To follow Christ, to be baptized into Christ, as the Apostle tells us this time of year, is to put on Christ. It is to be risen with Christ and henceforth to th seek only the things that are above, and no more the things upon earth. This is the message which Holy Mother Church gives tonight, especially to those who have been received into her fold. And yet, as happy as I am for these three men, as much as I share their joy, Thinking back 23 years ago, when I was in their very place, I do not quite yet offer them my congratulations. That will come 
at the end of this ceremony. For at this moment, there is something in the Easter joy which is not quite yet complete. It is a reminder that tonight's ceremony is completely different from what we will experience tomorrow on Massive Easter Sunday. What is the gospel that has just been proclaimed to us? What is the good news that has just been sung to us by the deacon? Non est ik. He is not here. The acolytes have processed for the gospel just as they did for mournful Good Friday without their candles. We have not yet heard the gospel in which the risen Christ himself speaks to us. We hear tonight only of the empty tomb, that he has risen but is not here. And indeed this is profoundly true for us. The blessed sacrament has not yet returned to church. And so the moment has not quite come to congratulate these three young men. The greatest moment is yet to come, their first Holy Communion. In a few moments, the risen and glorified Christ will be with us once again, really, truly, and substantially, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And for the first time, the Savior will enter under the roof of these three men and make his abode with them. By the blood and water which poured out from his most sacred heart yesterday on the cross, the channels of grace were opened to them in the sacraments. And tonight we witness the reception of the sacraments in their proper order. By baptism, they have been cleansed of original sin and placed in the state of sanctifying grace. All the wounds of Christ on the cross are now applied to their souls to heal the wound of ignorance and the understanding, of pride, envy, and greed in the will, of wrath, sloth, lust, and gluttony in the passions. From baptism, all the virtues have been poured into them, especially the virtue of faith. Through confirmation tonight, they have received hope and a burning desire for heaven, and also the virtue of courage, which in the Christian life is practiced not principally by acts of daring, but by perseverance. But tonight we are reminded that these two great sacraments are received in view of one even greater, indeed the greatest of all, the sacrament of charity, which is the Holy Eucharist. It is by this sacrament that we are enabled to observe the commandment we received from our Savior on Holy Thursday. Love one another as I have loved you. If the prophet Daniel speaks tonight especially to our catechumens, we must not forget that the prophets speak to all of us as well. I think tonight, especially of the prophet Jonas and his preaching to the Ninevites, which we have heard several hours ago now among the twelve prophets. This is one of several passages which the church reserves for tonight. She could easily have placed this passage sometime during Lent. For we already heard from Jonas earlier on during these 40 days. But the church reserves for tonight the moment when he preaches to the Ninevites and they do penance and their sin and their city is not destroyed. After 40 days of penance, after making use of that acceptable time which we heard of both at the beginning and at the close of Lent, 
the wrath of God was averted. This prophecy speaks especially to all of us who have made it alive to the end of another Lent. I know I can never return to my first Easter Vigil 23 years ago. I cannot be baptized and confirmed again. My only path to the fruitful reception of Holy Eucharist at Eastertide is the same as for all of you, the way of penance, the way of a good and holy confession, which allows us to renew all our baptismal promises tonight with a fervent Holy Communion. The tomb is indeed empty. Our Lord is not there. He is risen and will shortly be present for us once again in the Holy Sacrament of the altar. Through our risen and glorified Christ, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen.